Hey guys, Chris with Plumetry here. Today I want to tackle a pet peeve banking system called the Parallel Shift. It is only subtly wrong in most of its application, but it's wrong enough for us to correct. I want to show you why it's wrong. I'm going to show you three shots where it's typically applied to. I'm going to, and I'm going to show you a computer program that's going to try to really explain uh, how to think differently about this instead of a parallel shift, more like the radius of a circle. Let's. Uh, tackle one of the main shots this would apply to. Let's say you have learned my system, my diamond through diamond aim with speed system. So five shoots through 2.2 medium speed. Let's say you have tackled this shot and you're 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 good to go. You, you know how to shoot the shot, but you're actually not on this line. If we do a parallel shift, that means we could change at a one to one ratio. A parallel shift from five through 2.2 would mean through three goes through 0.2? Yeah, that's a look, look, that's parallel, all right? This is parallel to what we just described. Ooh, that's 0.2. So 5 through 2.2 and 3, the idea is that this goes cross corner and this shot goes cross corner. That's insane. If you shift in a parallel way, you are misaligning from the correct vanishing point. Again, we have our target for a cross corner bank reflected across our rail groove into a vanishing point. This is the correct line of aim. So you've come this far, you have a correct line of aim. We are at diamond one, two, three, four, five, goes through about diamond one, 2.2. So you've got your line of aim, but you are not quite on it. Let's say your, your line of your actual balls are lining somewhere on the inside. So a lot of people would advocate for a parallel shift. So once you have your trusted line of aim, just shift a little bit over the top in a parallel way. But this is nuts. Even look, look, I'm about a quarter diamond off here, but up here, a quarter diamond ends up about a half diamond off my vanishing point, which means I'm going to miss my target by about a half a diamond because I did a parallel shift. That is bad math. Let me show you instead what uh, the aim with speed system will do. The, this will be based much more on the radius of a circle. So like the hand of a clock, let me just get this set up. If you were on your, uh, you were close to your trusted line of aim, what you would do instead of doing a parallel shift, you would aim slightly inward towards your original line of aim. You would function more like the radius of a circle. Second shot that this is typically applied to is your three rail bank shot. A lot of people call this the plus five system or the plus five and a half, depending on your table, even six. In my table, this goes through about 5.5. Uh, we'll see if I can get it to go here. So I just shot eight diamond through 5.5. Now, a parallel shift, and you'll see this with diagrams, you'll see these like train tracks on top of the table and they're just but this is wrong. So then they'll say, okay, so if I shift one diamond here, I should shift one diamond there. That would mean seven goes through 6.5. Notice it's gonna run close, but it ran short. And it's gonna run even more short as I extend the table. Six goes through about 0.5. Now this is wrong. I'm shifting in a parallel way. This is wrong. Well, it went there. Now, theoretically, had it hit here, it would have run even shorter. What should be happening is once you find your line of aim, you would imagine a vanishing point. And getting that vanishing point exactly is the is like the heart of aim with speed, is figuring out where that is, and then figuring out how not to do a parallel shift, but how to rotate like the hand of a clock. So the third shot these are typically applied to is a kicking system, whereby you have like, let's say I'm aiming at the 12, uh, but I'm blocked there. I have a second cue here to demonstrate this idea. Um, so the typical instruction would say, find the midpoint, draw a line through the center of the pocket. And then what you do is you shift over the top in a parallel way. Now, let me just back that up a little bit. Oh, that's not gonna stay, are you? Oh, it stayed, great. So now the idea is that I would shift over the top. So let me just shift in a parallel way. You're gonna see this go wide. It went wide because that is not the correct aim. Now, in terms of the raw math, this actually is a brilliant system. Um, what you have here are two parallel lines cut by a transversal, that red line. Uh, in terms of math, we end up with a 
set of supplementary angles. These always add up to 180 no matter where I am. So the path of the cue ball will have this return effect. And with the midpoint, it will return it exactly where we want. Um, now that happens in raw math, but in terms of anything beyond a one rail bank shot, two rails and beyond, your raw math reflection angles are totally out the window because of the way speed compounds with multiple rails. So for example, let me just show you what would happen on, if you shoot this shot fast, right? You end up having it run longer or beyond, right? So this angle's tighter, hits the rail up here, and you're definitely going to run wide of that pocket. If you shoot medium speed, well, we still come down at this angle, no forward roll. But once it stuns on this rail, it actually picks up top spin on this rebound angle. And it ends up being like a soft shot, like a one rail soft shot, which ends up running wide because it gets that rotational axis that kind of makes it masse away from that line of aim. So it's almost like a slow shot in terms of a cross corner shot that I've shown before. Um, and if you shoot soft, shooting soft actually aligns you pretty well to this. If you try this shooting soft, you're likely to make the hit. But the problem is shooting soft, you the the speed deadens so much. Once you make the hit, they just sort of separate here and nothing touches a rail, which is not a legal shot in almost all pool leagues. Um, so instead, what I find works for this is shooting medium speed with a vanishing point aim. So instead of shifting in a parallel way, I should be just shifting ever so subtly inward. So instead of this kind of like a U shape, it's a subtle kind of V shape. Um, so let me try this. You can see that these are not parallel. I'm pointed inward a little bit at a vanishing point off in the distance. Let's see this make the hit. Now, to be fair, and in fact, to give you some valuable information, it is possible to do a parallel shift in a valuable way, just not shifting from a line of aim. We would use the parallel shift to get our line of aim. And this is a one rail kick system. Um, so we're trying to hit the three, we're blocked by the 13. What we do is we go perpendicular to the rail and we would stop at the rail group. And then what you would do, you would do that another midpoint calculation. So you'd, you'd get your line from the midpoint between the uh, cue ball and the object ball. And then you would do a parallel shift over the top, something like this. That finds your line of aim, and what you found is a medium speed line of aim. So we have the shot set up in a math program, right? So no matter how I move this, um, this stays parallel to this, but I'm not misaligning. I'm continuing to aim at that vanishing point no matter how I manipulate these balls. So this is the type of uh, parallel shift that will work. The, when you continue to aim at the vanishing point, but the parallel shifts that don't work are when you have a line of aim and then you shift away from that line of aim. All right. So once you've established your line, the correct line of aim for an angle, you can't parallel shift off of that line of aim.